Welcome back, everybody. Time to continue this Confederate campaign on Ultimate General Civil War. This is my no infantry campaign challenge in which I don't use any mainline infantry brigades. I'm only using skirmishers, uh, cavalry, and artillery. Uh, and if you notice that the numbers are larger than you're used to in some of those units, that's because uh, I'm using the JMP Rebalance mod. I'm not using the latest version of the mod, but it was the latest version when I began the campaign. And you can watch the beginning of the campaign. The link in the description below will take you all the way back to episode one. But we are now into Grant's Overland campaign, at least as it was historically, which means we're going to be diving in over the next couple of weeks into the battles of the Wilderness, Spotsylvania, and Cold Harbor. Uh, so this is the army. Uh, I get to take 30 brigades in one corps and 12 in another. So the first corps under History Guy, second corps under Robert E. Lee. And we're going to take all of our usual suspects, all of our patron units are uh, in here. As well as all of my rifled artillery, which I love to have whenever possible. I prefer that over the smoothbores uh, because of the ability to take out the enemy's artillery and gain that artillery superiority, which really comes in key. So we're going into Saunders Farm, which is the, pa uh, the part of the Battle of the Wilderness that we will be fighting today. And we'll see how it goes. We're going to be heavily outnumbered, but that's been the case all the way along. So nothing new there. Uh, but here's what we get to take in. We're going to be outnumbered by two to one, uh, which is going to be especially difficult with the, uh, the way my artillery will be somewhat subdued because of the, the woods. But I think we'll be okay. So let's dive in and see what happens. So basically... Um, we're going to be starting with a small force, and then we're going to get reinforcements as it goes along. So I want to have my most powerful, my best available units, but also have the numbers to be able to withhold him. So uh, let me go ahead and get this all set up, and we'll see where we go from here. So I'm actually pretty content with this force. I made one small change, put my three-star 14-pounder James unit in there. So Anzac Diggers and O'Hara Ohio Outlaws are both 20-pounder uh, units. Uh, O'Hare used to be 24-pounder uh, smoothbores uh, for close order combat, but he went ahead and requested that I could go ahead and change that to 20-pounders if I wanted to. Uh, we've got my three-star second CSA sharpshooters, my Riley's Rangers, my fourth CSA sharpshooters, and then some 1,000-man units just to kind of withhold the big numbers. I get to add one more to this, and I'm thinking probably one more 1,000-man unit just to be safe. I want to have a, a little bit more in terms of numbers out there. So you can see how heavily outnumbered I will be to start. Uh, it's going to be about 5 to 1. Uh, so the more I can hold back, I think the better. But I've got some pretty strong areas that I can defend up here. The main thing I'm thinking is that the more I hold back, the better off I'll be because then my reinforcements are closer and his have to travel further. So it may suit me to hold back a little more. I'm thinking this looks like a really good area to do that. But I do like those areas that I could defend up here, so I don't know. I'll go ahead and move into the usual area and take my chances, I guess. And it appears he's going to get there first, so I might just be better off to do what I thought about in the first place, which is to hold back. Because I don't think I can get to those locations before he can, so... I've never tried it this way before. Not sure how this is going to go. I'm going to throw skirmishers out on the sides. Hold my center with these thousand man units I don't think I want to have these guns up too close in case he does break through my line what I'd like to do is get these sharpshooters out on his flanks when he starts coming in just not sure how well that's going to go.
Wow, he's way out here. So you can see how many men he's got. This is going to be a tough battle for me. Because I'll have to weaken him enough to where I can march back in and take the objective at some point. So I was just listening to a... I've been listening to, uh, I do a lot of audio books rather than reading because I travel a lot. And I'm between being in planes and being in cars a lot. Uh, I've got plenty of time to listen to books. And so I've been listening to Ron Chernow's biography of Grant that came out in the last couple of years. It's fantastic. Some of you may have seen my video I made kind of talking about some of what I had learned in that so far. And uh, I'm now just now getting up to Appomattox. So I've been listening to his war exploits and... Uh, you know, the Overland campaign. It's been interesting to, to listen how that all went down and how it was perceived by the public. Obviously, Grant was seen as a butcher. Looks like they're going to sit pretty tight here, so I'm probably going to have to start advancing. But I want to be super careful of that because I've got to have my artillery support to do it. And I hadn't realized just the extent of how much Grant kind of brought with him a purge of Union command. Because there were a lot of political appointees as generals, and Grant really preferred the, the guys who had West Point educations. And so he, he actually submitted a pretty lengthy list of people he wanted removed from command. They weren't all removed, but a lot of them were. All right, now he's going to come at me. So we're going to have to withhold these, or withstand these, uh, these attacks that he's putting on me here while I solidify my line up here. We're going to put all this artillery where we can start hitting him. And then I think what I'll do is start coming around him on one of the flanks. But for now, I just want to get the artillery support and start neutralizing his artillery before I make any advances. the artillery. Come on, Stuart, you gotta hold. Don't let him break through to the artillery. pay for it. I don't know what he was thinking sending just a couple of brigades like that. Just, oh, oh, he's starting to hit the Anzac diggers. That was my big fear with my artillery was that he would break through my thin lines and be able to hit them like that. But I think now, now that the artillery is going to start firing, we should have some safety solidify these lines and finally start hitting his units. So I've lost about 240 men. Didn't lose any guns. Now let's start targeting his artillery. careful out here. Alright, I want to protect 
protect my sharpshooters. So I'm going to throw this unit under Macintosh out here, but I want to get the sharpshooters in and start firing into their flanks. Oh, Sims, what are you doing? Get back. Let's pause for a second. I want to see how things are shaping up. So we've taken out 5,000 men. It says 50 guns, but I don't know if that's accurate. But I don't know. I'll, I'm not complaining. Uh, and I've lost 600 men. So about 9 to 1 casualties. We'll take that because we're outnumbered 2 to 1. I don't like the fact that I can't get at these guns. I'm going to move the Anzac diggers up. I gotta start targeting Arthur's batter. I can't quite hit it. Right now, most of my 10 pounders are just taking on his infantry. Because they're not close enough to get at his artillery. Can almost hit Wainwright. Oh, he just got reinforcements. All I need to do to win this is uh, we've got to hold Saunders Farm and hold Saunders Fields, which haven't even been revealed yet, but I believe back here somewhere. That'll be at a later phase of this battle. But that means I'm going to have to really do a number on him to get to that place. All right, looks like we can advance a little bit now. I'm going to bring up the 10 pounders closer. we'll be able to get into these fortifications. What is he doing with that artillery? Wasn't real smart. thinking there. Alright, let's hurry up and get these guns up. Cause he's coming at me. I'm without artillery support at the moment. There, here comes a little bit. Nice. 
Hang on, Woods. Hang on. Taken out 9,000 men. Lost about 700. I'm in a much better position now that I'm at the edge of these woods. Now we're going to start targeting more of his artillery. He's targeting that battery big time. Jeez. Let's bring an Anzac diggers over here. We gotta hit this big battery. Oh wow, look at all that artillery he's bringing down. My goodness. So I've lost seven guns. Still got me by, got me by 106 guns right now. Got to reduce that artillery. Oh my gosh, my my siege guns. This is the first time that he has had a significant attack on my guns with his long range guns. It hasn't typically been an issue, so now I've got to be much more wary of that. A lot of artillery coming down. Gotta neutralize his in a hurry. He had me by 106 guns. He still got me by 100. Wow. Look at him go after my artillery. These guys, I just can't. Yeah, they're long range. I just can't reach them. Ammo's coming. Okay, now he's only got me by 84 guns. 78. We're rapidly reducing that. Get these batteries. Here comes Emery Upton. Upton was kind of the mastermind of the Union attack at Spotsylvania. We haven't gotten to Spotsylvania yet, but he was the one who came up with the idea that they ended up using. Take out that artillery. Let's hit that battery. These guys are close enough. Okay, he's down to just a 64 gun advantage now. Hit the guns in the back. Once the guns are taken out, then we worry about taking out his men, then we worry about taking the objective. Okay, just a 52 man, or 52 gun advantage. So we're quickly reducing that. Make sure I'm firing on all his batteries. Got one back here I haven't started hitting yet. Oh yeah, I am, okay. There we go. Now just a 40 gun advantage. we're getting Phillips. I feel like we're not really going after that guy yet. Just a 
10 gun advantage. There we go. Keep going. Take him down. Also, in terms of manpower, we've taken out 15,000 men. I've lost about almost a thousand. There's another battery coming in. And now we have more guns. He's down to just 69 guns. Got a new battery to neutralize. It looks like he may pull it back. Uh, we gotta get over here and resupply. All right, on to the next phase. All right, now I think we'll see the next phase open up. The sixth corps have been spotted on Germana Plank Road. Yeah, they're going to come this way, but I'm getting the last of my reinforcements now, I think, as well. Uh, so Saunders Field is now available. You can see it's back there. So I don't think that'll be a problem once we get to that point. Oh, this is still part of my first core. I haven't gotten any of my second core yet. Man. This artillery is pretty powerful, too. I mean, they've done a number on some of my units. I'm going to have to pull these 10-pounder Blakeleys back. They're just about to be wiped out. see what kind of reinforcements he's got now as far as guns go. He's down to 64. Let's pull these guys back too. I'm going to send some of these 1,000 man units up here just because I'm wondering where the 6th Corps is going to show up. I'll put these two over here. Looks like he may be trying to send his cavalry around on me. So we'll keep an eye on that. Pull these 10 pounders out. First time Anzac diggers have lost any kind of significant amount of casualties. One guns left. I've lost 44 guns, which obviously is nowhere near the number I've taken from him, but it's still a significant amount. Wow, siege guns have lost 89 men. I gotta be careful there. I don't have any more of those. Thankfully, I haven't lost any of the guns. got 31,000 men. Gotta, gotta reduce that number significantly before I can advance. I still have my second court coming, but that tells me he probably has more men coming too. Here they come. Yeah, he got reinforcements as well. As including some more guns, which I don't have any artillery in my second core. I wanted to have the artillery there from the start. Alright, I'm going to send this whole force up to the left. I've got, our, uh, got my melee cav here, but they're relatively useless in this environment. However, I figured they'd make for a nice cleanup crew when the time came. 
but I'm going to go ahead and start pushing all the way up to the edge of the map, and then I'll send a flanking force into him over here. Because I know his reinforcements are coming from that way, so I can't just leave that open. Reinforcements that are just now coming up, I'll plug them up in here and then they can hit him from this side. We should pretty much disintegrate his line at that point. And I'm just going to ignore this over here. He's only got me by 13 and a half thousand men. Here comes a six core. Ammo's coming. We'll send Graham over there. There's one more big battery right here I gotta deal with. Thousand man advantage. I've got him two to one on artillery. I don't know if this is the last phase of this battle. It is 4:30 in the afternoon. He's pouring his reinforcements down into here, which is perfect because that's where my artillery is. Out that battery. Only 37 guns left for him, and a slightly less than 12,000 man advantage. I think by the time we get to the end of this timer, we should be in a position to be able to advance on that, even if I have to send my cavalry in there. Now we're going to start our flank attack. Start to try to bottle him up if I can. Get up here and resupply these guys. Twenty-eight guns left. Just a uh, ten and a half thousand man advantage. He's starting to give up the field here. I'm not quite ready to advance into that yet. I'll be able to grab these or not, but I'm going to try. I don't think skirmishers can catch up to supplies that easily. You know what? I might just have to shoot them. I don't prefer that, but I don't really need the supplies that badly. I just want to prevent him from having them. Here comes another big artillery unit. 
have the artillery in position to hit them, so I'm gonna have to do it with infantry. Have my skirmishers fire on them. Is this General Wright? I think Wright was in charge of the Sixth Corps. Well, it's no, it still would have been Sedgwick at, the, Sedgwick at this point. He was killed at uh, Spotsylvania. His last words after being warned about Confederate sharpshooters at Spotsylvania was that they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. Well, apparently, apparently they could. Shifting over to his left big time, and I'm not sure why. Ah, we did capture those supplies. Alright, let's go ahead and send the cav up try to bring him over into this empty space up here. Maybe start to surround him. Nine, just under 9,000 men. More than me. I gotta deal with that artillery. That is a big unit of artillery that I don't wanna have to have firing down on me. So let's keep pushing. Still, that could, that could pose a problem if that happens. Alright, I want to pause and evaluate things a little bit here. 8,000 men more than me. He's only got 25 guns left. Probably pretty much all of that is in this battery here. I don't see any other artillery anywhere. There might be some hiding somewhere. Feeling pretty good, though. All right, let's proceed. I think I'm probably safe to start going down this way now. Drove back his infantry support, so now we can hit it, get at these guns. And if we push those guns this way, then they'll be in range for my artillery. I'm gonna let the thousand man skirmisher units do most of this. Alright, Kennedy, just shoot him. I secured the first objective. down there to say hello to Brian. 
send sweets down as well. Well, Tally Farrow was getting lit up by them. Oh, he's having a nice little counterattack on me here. I just gotta keep pushing. As long as he stays in the open right here, we'll be in good shape. the guns though. Soon we will have the advantage in numbers. Not quite there yet. So Rice, I, I'm guessing that's probably James Rice. Um, if you're familiar with the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, you know uh, the 20th Maine famously defended Little Round Top, and uh, their brigade commander was Colonel Strong Vincent, who was posthumously promoted to Brigadier General, or on his deathbed was. And um, James Rice actually took over command of that brigade from him. I think he was the colonel of... Uh, maybe the 40th New York or 140th New York, something like that. Anyway, Rice was killed. I don't remember at which battle. It may have been this one, but I know he was killed in 1864 uh, during the Overland Campaign. Yeah, he died May 10th, 1864 at Spotsylvania. That battery's still giving me grief, and I'm not happy about it. Oh, jeez. Here comes Brian again. He just has a thing for attacking Tally Farrow. We're going to hit Emery Upton right here, though. I'm going to wipe him out. Got you now, Brian. Hour 33 to go to get this objective. That shouldn't be a problem. He's only got me by less than 4,000 men now. Really got to take out this battery, though. Still got how many guns? 22.
behind into the corner. He's going to have nowhere else to go. Yikes. Get out of there, Kennedy. Run. Oh, I might lose Kennedy. That's a brand new unit. That's not a huge deal. Fall back, Leonard. Fall back. Plenty of time. We are inching toward this open ground with Saunders Field. Finally have the advantage in numbers. We're going to be facing huge armies from here on out from Grant. Badly as I've been outnumbered, it's only going to get worse, but especially when we get to Cold Harbor, um, he's going to have such a massive force. He'll probably outnumber me three or four to one, but that won't matter, especially with my artillery. Uh, that's going to be a fun one. Down to 13 guns. An hour to go. Let's inflict as many casualties as we can and then we'll charge in there and take that objective. Oh, didn't mean to send them yet. Feel our sweets just got ahead of the other guys, that's all. Seems to work out okay though. Mostly my my cavalry's there for shock and for cleanup when they get down to a small number of men. Now we gotta march across some open ground here and he's got some entrenched units. I don't know how this works. I know some of these battles you have to have the objective before the time runs out. So if the contested timer is 20 or 30 minutes, I gotta start moving. I'm not quite ready to, but I'm not sure I've got a choice. I can't take that chance. I think I've probably gotta make sure I take it before it hits 30, just to be safe. 
All right, we're going to send the cavalry out here just to kind of shock him into breaking, even though they're going to take some casualties in doing that. There we go. Got the objective. Yeah, see, it's a 30-minute 30, 30 timer, and I got it at 32. I'm just, I'm not entirely sure I could wait and take it at the last minute, so I went ahead and did that now. He doesn't get it back. Go ahead and hit these guys too. They're a little too close to the objective for my liking. There we wipe both of those units out. Yeah, that's why I love that melee calf. Morale's not great at the moment, but I still think they can probably deal with Russell too. Bartlett's got a nice position there. units to support these guys. Alright, Bartlett fell back. That should do it. Now we start sending in the cab to clean up on some of these infantry units that are still hanging on. go grab some of these supplies. I'm, I'm going to run out of time. That should do it right there. Yep. Okay. So, <laughs> Woo. Okay. So I actually only lost, what, 5,000 men total? Wow. That's pretty good. I thought it was worse than that. Uh, we inflicted 33,000 infantry casualties, 6,000 plus Artillery casualties plus took out 248 guns. Still only lost 33, so it seemed worse than it was. Uh, took out 3,300 cavalry and captured 187. All while being heavily outnumbered. 3 to 1 on artillery. So, wow, I'm, I'm happy. Very happy with that. I captured six 20-pounder parrots. That's nice. The rest of those are kind of worthless to me. Okay, that takes us on to the Battle of Spotsylvania, which we will get to next time. Let me know your thoughts. Use that comment section below, and we will proceed. Thanks for watching.